Hey, Jody here. This video is brought to you by my online store at weldmonger.com. Let's do it. I set up some pieces of cope tubing and I put them in the overhead position because that's probably how you're going to have to weld something like this for a roll cage or a chassis. Wall thickness on these pieces is about 150 thousandths and it's common practice on something that thick in motorsports to do two TIG passes, a root pass and then sort of a fill pass that also somewhat of a cosmetic pass. So I'm going to do that. For the first pass, I'm just going to run a bead in there, standard dab method. Second pass, I'm going to try three different techniques, pulsing with the pedal, lay wire, and then standard dab. For the first pass, I'm going to be a roughly 110 to 120 amps using this Furic number 12 clear cup just because I can run a longer stick out much easier to film but it works great for something like this as well a little later on I'll swap off to the ceramic version of this but I think you can see on this joint basically I'm just moving along at a fairly good clip and, and the trick here is just, just kinda keep turning your wrist to maintain a favorable electrode angle on tubing like this you can get out of scope pretty quick on your electrode angle and you can be leaned way, way back. And there's a lot of a lot of uh, fudge factor there where it can still work, but it works better if you maintain a pretty even angle all the way around. So that's the first pass in there, and that's not much weld compared to the wall thickness here of the tube. So I'm going to go over it with a second pass now. And for this one, um, for some reason, I didn't let it cool much, and that's going to be a little bit of a problem. But you'll see that at the on the final weld. Also, I had a little bit too much amperage. I knew I would need more amperage. Anytime you're pulsing, you need a little bit more amperage for the peak pulse than you do for the, like if you weren't using pulse. But 180 was a little bit too much, even though I, you know, hit it in short bursts. It wound up putting a little bit more heat than I wanted to into the part. That's a little bit of a learning experience. You see how gray the weld is there. Kind of almost wanting to sag just a little bit too. So the next pass, I will, I will change things up a little bit and I'll let it cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and screw the Ceramic 12 on there. You can see it's got threads. Doesn't use the o, it doesn't use the O-ring setup. So either you pull them off the adapter kit or you can just use it with a stubby gas lens kit. But I've got this sped up just about one and a half to two times here. You can kind of see me turning my wrist around here as well to maintain the torch angle. But... I'm using roughly the same heat on this one for the first pass, but the second pass I will let it cool completely, just per where it's barely warm to the touch, and then I'll also turn the amperage down a little bit to around 150. So I've got a good place to start here. Not much oxidation on there, so I'm not even going to bother wire brushing it off. I'm just going to let it cool completely. And then I'll drop the amperage to 150 and I'll try to move along at a pretty good clip still. Now I don't do much, never have done much pulsing with the pedal. Uh, it, the industries I've worked in just have not called for it. And some even, you know, kind of didn't permit it. A lot of times it didn't have a foot pedal. Just scratch start TIG on pipe. So I'm just kind of I'm just kind of learning here as I go along. I thought I would add it into the three methods that I tried here. But I made some pretty good improvement here just from the first weld to this one. And again, mainly it was, uh, I didn't change the technique a whole lot, which is, I'm not sure if my technique's all that great. But I did put a lot less heat into it. It looks better. That's, a, that's moving in the right direction there. All right, for the next one, I'm going to use this uh, lay wire technique, and I'm going to use a 332 wire. I'm just going to leave the wire in the puddle. And here, I think I was around 115 amps for this second pass here. Lay wire just like it sounds. I'm just leaving the wire in the puddle, just a, a little bit of pressure on it so that it doesn't come out of the puddle. I'm not really trying to push any extra wire into the puddle. I'm just walking over that 332 wire. And the good thing about lay wire is you, you don't come in and out of the puddle, so there's no risk of contaminating the, t the hot tip of that wire. You always need to keep that hot tip shielded when you are dipping in and out. But with lay wire, this is a really common method to use on pipe welding. I thought I'd give it a try here on this little coped saddle kind of a joint. Um, not horrible results. 
you know, as long as the first pass is clean and pretty much free from oxidation, um, goes in good. Now, if you got a really grade up weld, it won't go in so good, or you need to really power brush it before that second pass. This one is the dab method, the standard dab method. I'm going to drop down to a 1 16th wire here. This is my, my, probably my preferred method, just what I'm more used to. And, you know, I don't know which is better, but I like this better. There are some guys out there doing some crazy good looking work using the pedal pulsing technique though, so definitely not knocking it. Thanksgiving is right around the corner and that means I've got some specials going on at my online store at weldmonger.com. And one of the newest products that I've added, I showed in a recent video, is this large diameter gas lens kit that comes with 332 and 1 8 collet bodies and hardware and a 6, 8, 10, and 12 size cup. And so I did this walk in the cup video with multiple passes using a big chunk of stainless steel just to show not only the technique but to show how well a large gas lens kit works for walk in the cup on something like this. Whether it's a socket weld or a butt joint on a pipe weld or even just some round object that you want really good shielding on like stainless steel, gas lens kits work great for this kind of stuff. And I'll put a link for each individual product in the description of this video just to save you a little bit of time if you want to go straight to the product. You know, one of my standard products is a TIG Finger, and then I also have the TIG Finger XL, and you saw me using that in this video, and sometimes it's just nice to have a prop in your pocket. Other times, when you might have to preheat a part up to 500 degrees, it's kind of tough to find a place to prop without wooden blocks and things like that, and so that comes in really handy for, for that type of a job, whether it's a cast iron manifold, a big aluminum casting, or in this case, it's a piece of a chunk of 4140 steel that needed a 500 degree preheat. And it really came in handy for this. I was able to just rest my TIG finger right next to the weld and, and make the weld. So that's the TIG finger and the TIG finger XL. The XL is just bigger and usually two fingers can slip in the XL and it's, it's thicker. I also have them bundled. You can save a little bit if you buy one of each. This is a job I did a long time ago. It's a stainless steel shaft. You can see that little grounding trick right there. That's just a, a scrap piece of a ground clamp or ground cable. And it works great for round parts when you can't get a, round, a ground clamp on something. So here I'm propping with the TIG finger doing a little weave pass. I also did a little walking the cup on this too just to show the difference. But that was a repair for the machine job shop I used to do. For a 6G pipe like this, this is a, uh, a 309 root with a purge. You know, some people can walk the cup on this. I prefer to just kind of freehand it with a TIG finger, but I don't have to worry about my knuckles or my pinky or anything getting hot. And I can, you know, make the weld without worrying about that. So there are videos on some of my DVDs on these 6G tests. And this particular one, like I said, is a 309 filler metal on, on a black iron pipe. This is the second pass, doing the same thing, propping with the TIG finger and just not spending a lot of time across the middle because I don't want to suck back the uh, the root pass. Could walk the cup on this as well, but I like to be have the freedom of uh, moving as quickly as I can and not get hung up by anything. This is a regular gas lens kit on a water-cooled 20 torch. I sell those kits as well on the store. I'll link those up as well. I did this run of about 50 parts and I was able to walk the cup on there just, and it just was a lot less fatiguing and made for a pretty good looking part. But on this side of the, the, of the part, it was a little bit different configuration. So I decided to just kind of rest my TIG finger on there and use a pulse along with that Furic 8 cup. And you can see how hot it got, but my finger didn't. These things are super heat resistant. Another example here is uh, I did another run of, I guess, 30 of these parts. And uh, there was so much welding to do on them that they got pretty darn warm too. So I just did a, a deal like this, prop that XL right next to the weld. Up next is a stubby gas lens kit for 17, 18, and 26 style torches. This is what a standard cup you get when you get a TIG torch or TIG machine or whatever. And there's nothing really wrong with them. You're just a little bit limited on stick out. So I've got 7 sixteenths of stick out here with 20 CFH on a number 6 cup on stainless steel. And it wasn't quite, wasn't quite cutting it. Same exact stick out on a number 6 gas lens cup, 20 CFH. Didn't change anything. And you can see the difference. So, you know, sometimes the, the differences are very subtle. But in this case, they're very obvious. 
you know, one of them came out shiny like you'd kind of want it, and the other one was dull and gray and was swimming around. So stubby gas lens kit shrinks your torch as well as gets better coverage. I like to use a number six gas lens for aluminum. Uh, it takes a little bit less gas, gas flow, and it seems to stabilize the arc just a little bit. And uh, this is on a turntable on some aluminum that was about 70 thousandths thick. And it's interesting to see how that penetrates through there with that oxide film. If you're struggling learning how to TIG well, I think this bundle can really help. It's a stubby gas lens kit along with a four disc DVD set and a couple of TIG fingers. The Furic number 12 clear and ceramic kit are both really excellent cups. If when you need an extra long stick out and you need to maintain really good gas shielding with a long stick out, these things really can make a difference on stainless steel, Inconel, and even titanium. The clear one helps you see a little bit better, lights the path a little bit. It's also a little bit more likely to break. The white ceramic seems to shield just as well, but it doesn't quite light the path for you like this does, but a little tougher in, in the event that you would drop it. They shield great, and you really, where you really need great shielding is on an edge weld like this, where the, the edge kind of splits the gas anyway, and you get kind of you can get really poor coverage. It's especially important when you're making multiple passes, because you want every pass to be oxide free, so that the next pass goes on there. This was done with 50 pulses a second and 25 CFH. This is the number eight Furic cup. I did this job. This is again that part that I walked the cup on earlier, but I also experimented with this number eight cup and some pulse settings using the turntable with the torch holder there. And that made for a really nice looking weld. And again, it was just really easy. Long arc makes a huge difference in TIG welding. This is 160 amps. You can see how that rod is just swimming around, balling up, puddles swimming around. All I did here, same amperage and everything. I just tightened the arc up and that makes the rod, that uh, lets the rod, I should say, slip into the puddle, makes everything much more controllable and more confined, a lot more arc stability, and that big arc plume doesn't melt the rod before it gets in the puddle. This is the number eight Furic cup, clear cup in action again. I really like how it lights the way. For me, I'm, I'm 61 now, and it really does make a difference on helping me see where I'm going. Also, you get really good shielding with it. You can see the stick out here. This is a number eight as well. The stick out is a good five eighths of an inch. Still getting really good coverage here. This one's also rated for alternating current, this number eight. So you can see me looking through the cup right there. That's a, that's a benefit. These number eight clear cups work really great and they're much more less expensive than most of the other ones on the market. You can use them with a 920 style torch uh, without any adapter kit. They just need a gas lens collet body and with the adapter kit, they work on a um, 17, 18, or 26 style torch. But you can kind of see this one really lighting up the area around the weld, in addition to being able to see the puddle through the cup. Also got a bundle on those if you get a TIG finger in addition to the Furic 8 cups, you get a savings. Mag tabs are so handy, made by strong hand tools. The reason they're called mag tab is primarily they're for welding little tabs like this on for wiring harnesses and things like that. But they're good for all kind of little odd shaped parts. You know, if you're going to stick a bolt or a washer or practically anything on there, I'm just putting all kind of odd sizes on here just to show you how quickly it, it will hold something like that. Here's a use I found for it that I don't think they really intended was for putting end caps on tubing. You know, holding this and, and getting a quick tack on there with your fingers works fine, it, but you also burn your fingers every now and then. This, this lets you just kind of mess with it and get it get a perfect fit and then get a tack or two on it, remove the mag tab so you get the magnets out of the way and, and weld up. And you don't have to worry about zapping your fingertips. We've all done that. It ain't no fun. So there are several different bundle options where you can save a little bit of money. You can get this whole DVD set for the past several years, as well as a t-shirt, TIG Finger, TIG Finger XL, a lot cheaper than you can get them individually. One of the more recent products I added is this dual flow meter for when you're doing stainless steel or nickel alloys and you need that, that purge line, you need that second flow meter. Otherwise, you get a sugared area like that gray area on the bottom. If you get a good purge, it's more silver like on top, a whole lot better. So dual flow meters available on the store as well as all this other stuff. 
I'll try to link everything up in the description, but also you can just go to weldmonger.com and enter something into the search box if you can't find it right away. Hope you enjoy your family this holiday season. We'll see you next time.